Ain't gonna lie. All right, we're live. All right. Welcome back to Carnivore Backwoods. Uh, today we're going to be talking about protein and the fat. We're going to do a little fat chewing here. Um, my name is John. I'm out here in East Tennessee. And I'll let each person here introduce themselves. It looks like we're missing JT, but uh, he was up 24 hours, so we'll, maybe we'll forgive him this time. Uh, Larry, you want to introduce yourself, bud? Yeah, I'm Larry. I'm the carnivore soldier from Austin, Texas. Um, people say I look like James Hetfield, and I do, but I'm not him. So <laughs> that's all. And I, I'm, I'm a, I've been a carnivore since uh, March 22nd, so I'm six months in. Perfect. All right, Mike. Uh, my name is Mike Shaw, Mike Shaw TV. Um, I'm only 30, uh, 34 days in so far on this go around. Uh, maybe when we talk more, I'll talk a little bit more about my yo-yo dieting, but very committed this time. I've had success before. I'm having success now, and I like the way I feel, so I'm going to stick with it. But looking forward to visiting with you guys. All right. And then Brian. Hello, my name is Brian. I am from the Wicko's Carnivore YouTube channel, and I'm closing in on 15 months on the carnivore diet. Standing. <clears throat> awesome. So, Mike, do you want to just give us a, a you know a quick little rundown of your of your backstory? Yeah. So it's it it goes back quite a few years ago. Um, I was a radio guy, had my own radio show in Tucson, Arizona. And we got a sponsor uh, for a medical weight loss deal. And with that was a kind of a starvation diet. And I talked on the air about how I was losing weight on that. It was at 850 calories a day. And I did lose weight. I lost about 40 pounds in three months, which was great. Um, but it's really hard to stay, stick with. And I was cheating towards the end. But So I transitioned to a gym uh, and was doing HIIT training at this boot camp. And that was going really well. I lost another 13 pounds. Uh, but the guy who owned the gym, I'd never heard of keto before. He wanted me to do keto and then do some carb loading once a week and see my results and all that stuff. So I did research, got on keto, um, tracked my macros like crazy, but I didn't do it right. I supplemented uh, some magnesium, maybe the wrong kind. I don't know. Um, had a really bad time with that. So I got frustrated and had a pizza and a blizzard and started putting it back on. Uh, fast forward a little bit, did keto again, lost some weight, um, and then went off of it again, gained some weight back. Then finally I did one meal a day, four years ago, one meal a day, one steak a day and lost 40, 50 pounds in three months. It was great. Um, and then my mom got sick. I moved back to Lubbock, Texas, uh, a lot of stress with her dying. COVID hit right when she died and I fell off the wagon. And so now um, I'm in Iowa and I'm back on one meal a day. So uh, down nine pounds. And this time I ain't stopping. Here you well, go. Huzzah, as, as Ken Barry would say. Huzzah. So yeah. <laughs> congratulations. That's awesome. Um, Thanks. So we had a really good uh, conversation last Sunday. Uh, talked about uh, uh, non-scale victories. Had a good conversation on that. You want to you want to give us any non-scale victories that you want to talk about, Dad, in there, or before we move on to our our topic of the day. So, if you're still talking to me, um, I mean, the mental clarity is just amazing on on carnivore, and so I have that back. My mind is sharper again, which I just love that. Um, my eyes seem to be a little bit sharper as well. It's not, it's subtle, but, um, when I'm on the sad diet, it, my eyes get blurry. Also, my floaters are all but gone and they used to be really bad a couple of years ago. Um, let's see what else for clothes are now starting to fit better again. So that's progress. And I was getting a little bit frustrated, um, because I've only lost nine pounds so far in 34 days. And then, you know, last night they were um, during the 24 hour stream, which was great. And they played a clip from Jordan Peterson, who lost seven pounds the first month, seven pounds the second month, seven pounds the third month and seven pounds for seven months. 
So quick math is 49 pounds and uh, I'll take that. So, and again, I'm not planning on going off of this diet and I kind of had that revelation the other morning. I was like, man, it's a little frustrating. The scale's not moving as fast as I like. And then it was like, wait a minute, I'm healing and I'm not changing. So I expect good things. Slow and steady wins the race. So that's where I am now. Outstanding. Outstanding. I have, I weighed myself this morning and I am 72 pounds down from, from my starting weight of 345. And it works out to awesome. 0.36 pounds per day, which is funny because there was lots of weeks there where I didn't move at all. But then I just have a big move, you know, a big change in weight. But, you know, a lot of that is to deal with bone density, muscle, muscle growth, um, everything getting healthier. Your organs are probably getting healthier. So there's a lot of trade off between losing fat, which is what we want, and not losing weight. Because we actually want to gain muscle, we want to gain bone density, we want to be healthier. So you know, the scales is the big fat liar. Um, the tape measure is a really good one. I, I've mm. lost an inch from my girth since last week. I was forty eight inches around my girth, mm. and now I'm forty seven inches. So you know, that's a good measurement. <coughs> All right, if you guys, hey, if you guys have questions, put QQ put a Q in front of it so it's easier to find. But Callie <laughs> does have a question at twelve oh four. About eating steak, four. eating a steak a day, and I kind of answered it in the text. So if you want me to just jump yeah. on and continue, I can. Oh, I don't see a twelve oh four. Well, I guess since yeah, 104. I see it. Well, twelve oh four for central. <laughs> central, yeah, yeah. Sorry, one oh four. Yeah, right, right. Convert to your time. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right, here we go. So All since right. I'm the one, since I'm the one who mentioned Nomad to begin with. Um, <clears throat> Great question, Callie. So I was a little concerned, and that's kind of the, the video before last on my channel now, was that maybe I wasn't getting enough protein and or fat. <clears throat> and so what I try to do is usually, uh, so before I did a steak a day, and that was really good for me. Now what I'm trying to do is a steak, a couple eggs, three strips of bacon, <laughs> and eat as much of that as I can. Uh, I'll even throw in a, you know, a tin of sardines, you know, something like that. And some days I am too mad. So I'll have the, I'll have the eggs and bacon in the morning with maybe some sardines and then, and then the steak in, in the afternoon. But you can also just, you don't have to do um, a restricted time diet like that to start. I mean, you're going to end up being that way in the end. Like for me, I I'm down to one or two mad, but when I started, I just did like Anthony Chafee said, and whenever I was hungry, I ate and then I ate till satiated and stopped. And then I snacked too in the beginning. And then over the months, it went from three meals a day plus lots of snacks to one to two to three meals a day and very few snacks to now one or two meals a day and barely ever snack. And that's just your body learning hunger signals again. Um, so I think that's something else you can do. You just have to, every, everyone's body's a little different. And also your experience with dieting. If you've never dieted before, it's probably easier just to do that than to jump right into an OMAD and carnivore at the same time. That's, that's pretty advanced stuff. But if you've done keto before and you've done um, time restricted diets, then it's probably okay to to do that. Cool, yeah, Brian. I find you got anything to be true too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that what the, both of them said was pretty spot on. Uh, the only thing I would say is, um, if you are looking at just eating steak, um, there's there's different levels of fat content in the different types of steak. So like ribeye is going to be much more fatty and um, you, you really need that fat. And then eating something like a sirloin is going to uh, be a little bit more leaner and not have as much fat to it. Um, and when uh, carnivore soldier mentioned the ground beef that, you know, that, that's still beef and it, it's a great option, especially if you can get like 70, 30, 75, 25, that's a really good mix with the fat content. Yeah, I mean, I eat mostly ground beef all week long, and then I eat, I throw steaks in there with it. And I, when I do steaks, though, they are ribeyes because that's the best. Yeah. So, so if I could afford a ribeye every day, I would do that. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I I eat ground beef three or four times a week too. So, yeah. Um, I would say that you just got to make sure that you're getting your fat level because fat's really, really important <laughs> on this diet, and I don't think mm -hmm. it's emphasized as much as it should be. Um. Steak is great and protein source is great, but if it's not a if it's a lean steak and you're not getting the fat, you're gonna feel horrible. Yeah. You're gonna feel weak. Right. You're gonna feel like somebody you know kicks you. 
and you're going to be like, this is a horrible diet. But if you keep your fat levels up, you're going to lose weight. You're going to feel amazing. You're going to have this crazy amount of energy. You're going to find yourself waking up like me, you know, at five o'clock in the morning on a day off and decide to go do something because I'm just, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So yeah, um, the question is kind of twofold there. It says, are you eating steak a day of good for you? Yes. Do you have, you don't have any fat or eggs? Well, I would say you're probably going to need fat or eggs. Now, some people will cut the whites out of their eggs, you know, by clearing it out and just cooking up the yolks, which is where your fat is. And, if, and that's not a bad choice too, but uh, you d you're definitely going to need fat in your diet. And so you're going to have to base it on what you're eating. Um, I, I, I find, butter. yeah, yeah. Butter. I, I add butter to a lot of things. Butter is always good. I add um, butter to everything. <laughs> and then I use ground chuck, which is already going to be fattier in itself. And ground chuck has a better flavor. And that's a, that's a great little meal. If you just want to, you know, take some ground chuck, cut it up on, you know, on a cast iron pan or in a pan or whatever, and, uh, and eat that little, maybe a little bit of butter. Um, you know, sometimes, um, I'll sprinkle a little bit of cheese on it, but I'm really careful with my dairy. Um, but you know, always want to have a little bit of fat in there so that you're, you're getting a good mixture. Right. And when I lived in Lubbock, I went to, I went to United supermarkets and talked to the butcher, you know, the meat department said, Hey, do you guys have fat trimmings? Yep. And they sold it to me for like 50 cents a pound. You know, it was too. just amazing. Yeah. Well, you haven't and done then, that yet. Uh, <clears throat> check it out, man. Cause it's gold. Yeah. Now the high V here in, in uh, Harlan, Iowa, they don't sell their meat trimmings, but what they do is, I mean, they're fat trimmings, but what they do is they, they add it to their ground beef and they come up with their butcher's special ground beef or whatever it is. And they don't put the percentage on it, but it's better. Yeah. It's higher fat than the 80, 20 is. And That's so cool. I just get that. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. So what I do is I get mine and I put, I cut it into small chunks and I throw them in Tupperware and put them in the freezer and I bust those out and air fry them and drop them on top of steaks or alongside like a little side dish. They're so good. They're crispy and they're, you know, you air fry them 400 degrees they get nice and crispy and just taste amazing. It's the new chips. It is. It's, like, it's a side dish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So, anyways, let's uh, let, let me ask a question of each of you. What is your favorite cut of meat? It, you know, not counting price. Just if you were gonna, you know, eat something, what would be your favorite protein? There, we'll start. We'll start with Larry up here in the corner. My favorite protein, obviously, well, it's beef. And then um, <clears throat> ground beef is what I go to every day. I I don't think I've had a day without ground beef in um, in three or four months. And so that's my number one. And then, of course, ribeye steaks, amazing. And my ground beef varies, varies right? It could be patties. It could be my meatball recipe where I put bacon and cheese into it or something. It's just, you know, I can do different things with the the burger, but usually patties. And then I put butter on it because I know when I cook the patties, if I grill them or even air fry them, a lot of the fat drips down and I lose it. So I add fat back in because I don't, I want to get that full 70, 30 if I can. And I always get the cheapest uh, ground beef I can find because it's usually the highest fat, which is what you want. And you can buy those big, huge tubes. And then if you get Ziploc bags, you get gallon Ziploc freezer bags and you break those tubes up into five, one pound segments then use a rolling pin and flatten them out and throw in the freezer that's a good way to do it i know some other people do that and um i do the same kind of thing that way they don't go bad because you, you know eating five pounds i mean i can eat a pound a day so it's not that big a deal but if i get a couple tubes then you have to freeze some for later so that's yeah beef is definitely my favorite um i my son loves shrimp and uh and mahi mahi so that's why i get him uh costco's got some good frozen shrimp and mahi mahi that you can uh grill up so he gets that and um and of course ground beef for him too cool so is it is it ground sirloin ground chuck or is it just ground hamburger it's whatever's on sale man and whatever's on sale I yeah I, I don't yeah it doesn't matter to me because the quality difference for our body is not big enough to to worry about so i just get the best deal and i load up now uh, here's another thing i do i get okay heb is a grocery store we have here in texas which is amazing so if you ever come to texas go to <clears> heb <throat> They have Wagyu burgers and these are already made into patties and they're Wagyu and they're so fatty and they taste so good. So I grab those for like my splurge days because it's two burgers for six bucks, I think. And they're basically two thirds of a pound. You know, it's they're good burgers, though. They taste so good. No, that uh, sounds good. 
Yeah, Wagyu burgers. If you if you can get some Wagyu beef and make burgers, that's like premium. You want to do premium <clears throat> meat? That's premium ground beef. <clears throat> that sounds good. I had some uh, uh, ground ribeye from uh, ah. Sands Club, and those were really good too. All right, Brian, same question. Um, I'm really a big ribeye guy, so you know if if price was no option, I would eat ribeyes every day, probably every meal. I, I I'd never get tired of them, and that the fat content is great, and sometimes I even add extra butter on top to be honest um but yeah i i'd have to say that that would be my go-to protein um because it has good amount of protein and you know the, the fat content is right there so ribeye would definitely be mine um definitely anything beef is probably the best there like i like to eat chicken wings and sometimes i'll have like some seafood or something like shrimp or whatever um I'll have chicken thighs with the skin on them and that kind of stuff, but I always feel best and seem like I have the most energy and so forth when I'm just eating beef. Outstanding. Um, any, any aversions to any particular meats? So something you just don't want to eat, you know, you've tried it and it just, it didn't set well with you. Or... I have not had any issues with any type of meat. No, no, I don't, typically eat organs i'll say that um and i i don't know i i can't say that it's because of taste or anything i just don't eat them so okay all right mike what about you yeah so i mean the same if i could afford a ribeye every day i would have a ribeye every day um I've been doing pretty well lately i've been having ribeyes at least half of the day so i've got one thong out right now that i'm gonna cook up when we're done so i mean that's my number one i'm glad you brought up heb because i really the one thing about moving to iowa i love iowa and yeah. just have an amazing church family here and just all the new friends i've made and all that stuff but there's no heb and so i'm yeah. having trouble finding lamb that's heb nice. has had like i could get lamb for like eight bucks a pound and uh and lamb burgers and so i really miss that i like the taste of it um, also in Lubbock, there's a, a place that sells amazing fatty brisket called the shack. Um, huh. now since the pandemic, the price of a brisket from someone who's making it for you has really gone up. Uh, so that would be a special treat and what I would, and hopefully you guys, maybe you guys can help me with this, but, and I've watched some videos, but I need to learn how to make a brisket here at home because, uh, and I don't have a grill, <clears throat> at least not yet, but I would love to make up a big brisket. Um, and I guess my question for you guys, I don't know if you've tried this, but can you take a brisket and then cut it off in sections like, like, and fry them up like steaks? Would that work? I wonder. Um, and then I, I love that would be a little on the tough side. Yeah. You need yeah, to smoke right. it to get the, to break down the fat. You got you got to cook it for a long time to break it yeah. down so where it's it's, it's tender. Because I'm pretty sure if you just threw it on a grill and tried cooking it, you'd probably be you'd be there chewing on it for a week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe I won't try that. Maybe maybe I'll try it for the channel just for fun. Um, I mean, a crock pot. I love seafood better for you. Or yeah, crock okay. pot it or or or, or uh, instapot. Um, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Or you know, smoke the whole thing up and then cut it into chunks and throw some of it in the freezer for later and then eat you know eat some. I That's what to, I do a lot of things. I used to make um, uh, the uh, what's the Irish corned beef brisket in a crock pot, and it's the same. You know, okay. it break down the over six eight hours. It's going to break down all the fats and make it very moist. Where it forks apart, right? Yeah. Hey, I wonder if you could idea. sous vide it as well. If doing the probably. sous vide would probably make it good. <clears throat> Yeah, I would expect so, but I haven't tried people that. People are fancy. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> sous vide is fancy, man. I don't know if I'll ever get one of those, but <laughs> I do have an Instapot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong. Uh, I've got a friend who has a sous vide uh, in, in Phoenix, and I've had a couple couple chunks of meat from that, and it's pretty pretty darn tender. So, um, But that's good stuff. And the other thing I was going to say is I, just, I love seafood. So, you know, I'll grab a pound of salmon or something and just fry that up like I would a ribeye, except it's salmon. Or I'll get um, some frozen shrimp and, you know, throw that in there, let it thaw out. 
Sometimes I'll just eat a pound of shrimp by itself with some butter. Uh, or I might even cook it with a little bit of garlic if that's allowed. So, <laughs> you know, it's so good. And I love liver. I just don't, I don't eat it enough, but I have some in the freezer right now. So no liver thanks. once in a while. <laughs> yep. So for me, you know, ribeye is my go-to. I love a, you know, a good ribeye steak, but if I could, if I could find it and it's hard to get, it's hard to get out here on the East coast. It's really popular on the West coast is I like a good tri-tip, yeah. you know, I'll cook up and cook a tri-tip and that's really good eating, but it, it seems to be harder to find around here. I found it in a few places, but you won't, you won't go to the local grocery store and get it. Um, nice. My go-to for beef because ground chuck just tastes better than all your other ground beef is, is ground chuck. Um, and so that's, that's my go-to for ground meat. We'll eat that. Uh, we'll eat that a couple days a week. Um, we eat a lot of eggs. Um, you know, uh, I got uh, six, eight chickens out there and I, I out eat those guys. They, they can't produce enough eggs. So we're buying eggs constantly. Um, and then uh, um, fried chicken cooked in lard is, is, a, is a once a week treat. And it's, no, we lost him. He's, <laughs> he's <laughs> it's an unfortunate freeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's gonna, my problem. Anyways, fried chicken. Catch some flies. Yeah, it, it always happens when I'm talking, and it's me that has the problem. So it's really funny. Um, anyways, fried chicken is, is my go-to once a week. The wife cooks it in lard. There's no seasoning on it, no breading. Just fries it up until golden brown, both sides. Then you add a little bit of Redmond salt to it, and it is absolutely <laughs> off the hook. Um, I need to post uh, a little video on it because it's really good eating. So anybody got some questions, make sure you put them here in the comments. Um, put a big cue before it so I can spot them. And then uh, tell us what Laura, your go-to. Um, Laura, Laura Russell, Laura P. Russell at 118 Your Time said you can cook a brisket in an oven for 200 degrees for eight hours. And that's very similar to what you do when you smoke it, right? So I have a smoker. It's an right. electric one. You can get a cheap electric smoker too, like I have. It's 150 bucks or 160 bucks, and you can throw one in there with some wood chips and some water, and make and reproduce a really good brisket on an eight-hour schedule. You just swap the wood out and the water out halfway through, but um, it's really not that expensive to do. And that way, you have your Texas-style, you know, real smoked brisket that you're craving yep. right now. I am. I am. Uh, back in my TV days, you know, when you're a local celebrity, uh, yeah. you get tagged. Hey, Mike, can you come <clears throat> judge our brisket competition? Uh, and this is when I was eating sad, but I was like, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. The dangerous ones are the chili competitions because you've got you know, 10 different chilies in your stomach. I'm like, is this going to oh, be wow. OK? That's not good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it always worked out, but yeah, it was fun. I assume if you want the Sprouse, Sprouse must be a store if they have it as more yeah. expensive. Yeah, I mm -hmm. used to be able to buy, you know, tri-tip yeah. on the West Coast anywhere <laughs> I went. But uh, there's only a few places around here that I've found it. Yeah, I've seen it a lot in the West yeah. Coast. And and uh, if you do want to um, take a look at the smoker I use, I have links on my website, carnivoresoldier.com. Oh, cool. It's an Amazon product, so <laughs> yeah. it's easy to get. You can take a look on there. Right. Mm -hmm. And help your channel at the same time. There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. It's a win-win. That's how. All right, guys. I, love it. I have a uh, recipe on my channel uh, for reverse seared smoked steak that I learned from Cooper's. You ever been to Cooper's Barbecue when you were in Texas? That's down in Lano. It's way, no. way far away from you. So they yeah, actually. No, I've smoke. never been to Lano. It's kind of like a sous vide thing. They they actually smoke the steak until the internal temperature is a little over hundred degrees. So it takes <laughs> twenty minutes, and then they pull it off and they sear it. Just doing a reverse sear like you do in an oven. And it is an amazing ribeye. So definitely, if you can get a smoker, that will blow you away every now and then just to have a little, you know, up your game a little bit. Next time you're Lano, I always make fun of Lano because it's the Llano Estacado, but it's the Lano River and the and <clears throat> at the town of Lano. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's just funny. And then, uh, you know, La, La Mesa, you would think, but uh, south of, of Lubbock, but it's La Mesa. So don't get that wrong. Oh, I didn't know that. I would call it La Mesa, too. Yeah, it's La Mesa. <laughs> so there's actually a so I, I drive a Jeep, right? And uh, there's we go overlanding a lot. We look for trails. We have these apps that show us where off road trails are that illegal to go on. So there's a yeah. there's actually an off road trail called Rivers and Ribeyes. And it's in Lano, Lano. So 
you, you basically do this uh, trail for four hours. And at the end, you come out by Cooper barbecue and get yourself a smoked ribeye. So that's what the name of the trail is. It's like totally a carnivore trail, man. So cool. That is cool. Awesome. That's tailor made for you. And yeah, you can Google it. Google rivers and ribeyes. You'll find it. Nice. All right. So my next question is, and we can work, I'll start with Mike and work our way around the other direction. So I'm not always picking on Larry. Um, What do you do when you're wearing, where's your go to when you're eating out? You know, um, you know, where are you going to to grab some food? How are you ordering it? What's some of the places that you, you visit as a carnivore? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, in fact, if I if I wasn't scheduled for this live, you know, I hightailed it out of church to get here on time. And so I got a text uh, when I got home. Hey, some of us are going to the uh, Mi Casa, which is a local Mexican restaurant here. It's, it's decent. And uh, if, if I had gone, what I would do would probably order one of the fajitas, either shrimp fajitas or maybe the steak fajitas. And then, you know, probably I would, I would probably eat the guac. (laughs) I love guac and I still have an avocado now and then, but of course I wouldn't have the flour tortilla. So for Mexican restaurants, your fajitas is a really good option. Um, You know, otherwise, you know, fast food, you could get, you know, bunless burgers or bunless bacon cheeseburgers. I'm trying to think, you know, if a steakhouse, I, I don't know. It depends on who you are. If you want to be careful, if you want to ask them, you know, are you frying this thing on vegetable oil or, or could you do it for butter for me? Uh, if you want to be that guy and I don't know if I haven't tried it yet. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts on that. Okay. Brian. Well, I think eating out can be pretty problematic because either you're not going to get enough meat to what you're used to eating in a meal or you're going to be spending way too much money because you have to pay for add-ons and so forth right um so i try to keep it to a minimum but i still go out to eat and one of the my favorite places i would say is actually buffalo wild wings because they cook their chicken wings in lard right um they do you do have to be careful of their sauces because some of those (laughs) sauces can be pretty sugary so what you can do is get get your wings and get the uh, sauce on the side and then just dip a little bit so you're not using too much. Um, don't go for some of those sauces that you know are like the sweet and so forth because they're going to have more sugars in them too. Um, so that's one of the big, better places that I like to go. Uh, if you're going to a steakhouse, you know, like Mike already said, um, it it you don't know what they're going to be cooking it in right a lot of them cook it in seed oils and whatever um you, you might be able to ask them to cook it in butter or something or say that you're allergic to seed oils i i've never done that um i'm a little scared to do that knowing that i've known people that have worked in the food industry and <laughs> don't know that i want to make those kind of requests um but so the other thing is you know if you want a really good size steak you're probably paying 30 40 dollars and you know i i could get that at the store at like a costco or something like that for maybe 15 to 20 dollars or less and i feel like i can probably make it taste even better than it does at the restaurant myself um absolutely i do like mexican food so just like was already said um Fajitas are a good option if you go there. Um, there's one local restaurant that we go to sometimes, and I like to get um, it's a chori polo. So it's basically chicken and chorizo, Mexican sausage. Um, there's like a cheese sauce to it and so forth. Now, they usually do bring you out the flour tortillas. You don't have to eat those. Um, they'll bring out like Mexican rice and um like refried beans or something, you don't have to eat those. And then the other thing is if you're going to a Mexican restaurant, you probably need to try and refrain or or at least not keep it to a minimum, the chips and salsa that they always bring out because um, yeah. that can be pretty bad for you. Yeah. Um, so those are normally like the types of places that I would go if I go out to eat. All right, let's answer this real quick before I go to Larry. Uh, here's where I get in, uh, getting confused. I watched one... Uh, carnivorous and, and she says eat a stick of butter a day others say no butter eat leaner meats if if 
if I have fat to lose. So which do I follow? Um, I would never, per and I'll answer this first. I would never recommend eating a butter, a stick, you know, a stick of butter a day. Though I eat probably, you know, over the whole entire day with whatever I'm eating. I probably, you know, maybe maybe a quarter to a half a stick. Um, but you got to have fat on this diet. And there, there are some people who can't get this idea out of their head that they need to go lean meat. They, you know, it's that leftover myth in their head. And so they try preaching that you got to keep it lean, you know, that way it'll burn your fat. Well, that's not how your body works. Nope. You actually need to feed it fat. And by feeding it fat, it will get rid of your fat too, because it's like, I don't need this fat no more because you're feeding me. Um, so, I mean, you got, I mean, you have to make a decision for yourself, but the proof's in the pudding. I eat high fat, high protein, and I've lost 72 pounds in 200 days. Nice. Um, that's awesome. You know, that's that's where I'm at, and, and I think you'll find the same. If you keep your fat level up and keep your protein level up, you're going to watch the weight fall off, and you're going to be absolutely amazed by it. It might not show on the scale every day, but you're going to look at yourself and you'll be like, "Man, I look I look skinnier. These clothes are fitting you know fitting better." And uh, you know, you get a cloth tape measuring and you start measuring your girth, you're going to be like, "Wow, I've lost a half an inch this week. My weight didn't move at all." But look, look what's happened with the tape measure, and that, and that's a good indication of your overall metabolic health. So, yep. um, yes, you need fat. Do you need a butter, a stick of butter a day? I mean, that depends on how lean the meat I guess you're eating and stuff, um, and how much you like butter. I mean, butter is not bad for you, and there's something in it. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there's something in <laughs> butter that helps um, curve your cravings. Yeah. And I think that helps some people because they get that, that butter and they don't feel hungry again. Uh, Larry, what's your thoughts? I, I, I actually, well, I, I haven't gone through my out, dining out yet, but first of all, I'll answer this. So uh, I actually do snack on butter throughout the day. Whenever I feel like my energy dipping, I'll go get a piece of butter and slice and eat it. Um, the thing is, you can't overeat butter or fat because once you do, you will run out of bile and all of a sudden you'll have the runs. So you'll know your body's not going to like, oh, I have extra butter. So I'm just going to keep stacking it. It just gets rid of it at that point. So it is an experiment with your own body. We have to learn how much fat to add to your meals. But if you're ever feeling low on energy and, you know, try adding some more fat because that's one thing you can do. So that's that's that. Um, on the, That's all I got to say on that. But I, And I do add butter to everything I eat. And I eat probably a half a stick a day, I would say. Perfect. I was just going to answer this question real quick since I saw it in there and I was going to let you tell your story about eating out. Uh, okay, Mike, well, what's your thought? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I, I think I saw on, I think it was a uh, steak and butter gal who had, um, I don't know what she is, if she's a nutritionist or something she is. Um, who basically recommends this, <clears throat> the, the stick of butter a day. And my feeling on that was it was mostly for women uh, to help with hormones. So it might be a little bit different. Um, you know, since we're a bunch of dudes here, um, but, but I'm with you though. I mean, I'll snack on butter, especially at night. You know, if I get, if I get a little bit hungry before bedtime, I'll have a, I'll have a, what's equal to about two pats of butter and, you know, grass fed, of course, and that helps. And then, you know, this is funny, but you can tell if you're eating enough butter, like you said too, with your poop in the morning. So yep. <laughs> if you're having a little tougher time pooping and on carnivore it's not a big poop it's you know little poops but um you know if if you're having if if you're having a little tougher time on that maybe i didn't have enough fat the day before so that's kind of a gauge i guess i would agree TMI. let me ask you this you don't walk around <laughs> with a stick of butter eating it right none of you guys do nobody's like because <laughs> you, you see that you see these these <laughs> these thumbnails on youtube videos where yeah. they're like ah. and i'm like no no i'm not i'm not <laughs> I'm not chewing on a stick of butter. I do add it to my meals. Brian, what's your thoughts? Um, so I think, first of all, it's important to understand that everyone is different and everyone's sharing their experience. Um, it doesn't mean that that's going to be the most optimal for you. So you have to figure out what's going to be the most optimal for you. Um, what I can say, though, is that um, humans, our brain is bigger and more complex than any other animal and we need more fat than other animals so if there's people out there saying that you need to eat more leaner meat they're maybe they're thinking about because other animals eat leaner but not humans right. it, it's a fact that our brains need the fat um to function properly yep. so 
So you definitely want to make sure that you're eating a good amount of fat. Um, you know, I, I don't go out there and just try and eat a stick of butter or anything like that, but I want to make sure that I'm getting enough fat. So I do add butter to my food. I cook it. I cook my food in butter, um, bacon fat, which is really good for you as well. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of those things to make sure that I'm getting enough fat. And I will say too, the difference between males and females is definitely there, that there's the whole hormone thing and everything. So, you know, you're probably going to be a little bit different than most males with your diet. Um, but <clears throat> definitely don't go too lean. Um, a good way to know how much fat you're, if you're getting enough fat is if, if you have really runny stools, you're probably getting a little bit too much fat for you. And, um, if you're having trouble, you know, they're really solid and you're having trouble. So not that you just go once every couple of days, but you're actually having trouble going to the bathroom. Then you're definitely not getting enough fat. If you're tired, feeling lethargic, you're not getting enough fat. You should have a lot of energy on this diet. You feel really good. And if you don't have that, you're probably not getting enough fat. So those are different ways you can tell if you yourself is, are, is getting enough fat for your body. I'll just add in there, if you look at carnivores in the wild, if you look at a lion out there and they kill their prey, the first thing they're consuming is um, is going to be organ meats, which are high in fat. You know, they're going to yeah. consume, you know, brains. I know that's kind of gross to a lot of people. and There's no way I'm eating brains either, but uh, that are high in, in saturated fat. The first things that they're going for are the fattiest pieces of meat. And if you actually watch a lion, it will eat the fatty meat and then leave the carcass for the buzzards and stuff to clean up, yeah. which eat the, the less fattier parts of, of the meat. Now I'm not saying that that's what we need to eat just eat some brains, but we do need to make sure that we're getting the fatty meat because that's what our body needs. That's our body designed to burn. Uh, so that's a great question, Callie. And I really appreciate it. That's why I yeah. stopped right there. Um, Larry, go ahead and tell your story about eating out. Yeah. So I'm single. So I go on dates. And on dates, you have to go out and eat a lot of times because, you know, that's what you do. So what I do is I will eat before I go on a date so that I can just go order a hamburger patty. And it'll be, you know, it's a good carnivore meal. It's not, I mean, I'm not going to order four hamburger patties at a restaurant, but I'll order one. And I have something to eat while we're talking kind of thing. So it's a social event. Luckily, I'm also in Texas, so I can go out and get barbecue. And a lot of times I'll invite people to barbecue because then I can just eat brisket and sausage or whatever i want uh all the fatty meats i'm looking for um but i think yeah so barbecue and then burger patties uh, those are social things when i'm solo i'll do barbecue sometimes as well or uh i will actually go to like in and out burger and just get what they call a flying dutchman which is burger patties with cheese or i'll go to wendy's and get like the baconator with cheese just plain in a bowl and add salt to it i always add salt to them but that's that's kind of my thing and then water so if I'm on a date, though, it's weird because I'm eating a burger patty and she's right across from me. The last day I went on, she's like dousing this huge salad with all these seed oils. And I'm like, wow, that's it. But, you know, before I had no no reference. And now I do. It's like, holy cow, she doesn't know what she's doing. It's, you know, right. it's and, hard to watch know. people. It's hard to watch people poison themselves. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. And then they're like, well, I could never do that. And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't I don't want to like preach. And so I'm just like trying not to rock. It's like talking politics or religion. It really is. It's that. Yeah. yeah you don't want to be that nerd on the thing. thing. <laughs> it's that much of an emotional thing where people latch onto their dogma and yeah. you know, uh, it, the dogma is diet. So yeah, for sure. That's what I do. So I, I will go to like driving. Oh, we got another frozen John here. I'll go to, yep, there we go. <laughs> okay. I'll go to Wendy's <laughs> in and out. Um, you can do burger. I've done McDonald's before the patties are fine. And then, of course, uh, barbecue, Mexican. And I, oh, the thing about the grill. Okay, so I've gone to Texas Roadhouse, where, and I recommend picking out your own steak because you get one that's marbled oh, yeah. properly. And when you go there, you can tell them, hey, listen, I've got an uh, allergy to seed oils. I tell them that. I'm like, hey, I got an allergy to seed oils. So if you could do it on a naked grill, that'd be fantastic. And usually they will. They're like, okay, because you're spending 40 bucks, 50 bucks for a steak. you know. And I, and I tell them, uh, I got this from someone... Uh, I forget which which carnivore it is, but I say, hey, bring me a baked potato, but leave the potato out, just all the toppings. And then uh, and they bring you a bowl with sour cream, cheese, 
you know, all and bacon in it. It's like, all right, that I got that. And then I say, hey, bring me a salad, uh, but leave all the salad out. Just bring the eggs in a bowl. So that you're getting a side, you're going to pay for it. They're not going to give you a discount. So get a bowl full of eggs and a bowl full of baked potato topping and eat that with your steak. And that is right on, man. I have done I approach, have done yeah. that numerous times now. Um, I restaurants are used to people coming in there and saying, "I need this gluten free. I need this. I yeah. need this. You know, I'm allergic to this. I'm allergic yeah. to that." So asking for for something that's saying I'm allergic to seed oil doesn't alarm anybody to, to my knowledge. Um, I've done that at restaurants. I've done that at Waffle House and got them to cook my eggs on the flat grill and not use uh, uh, oil to cook them in their little pans. Um, and so that's always a great tactic. Now, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm doing a 48-hour fast every other weekend. I started on, I started on uh, Saturday's my last meal, and then, I'll, then I won't eat again until, uh, until Monday um, after work. So I'll get 48 hours in. And what we've been doing is I've been picking the wife up for work. You know, so we've been going to O'Charlie's, and they have a sirloin steak that they call the Cajun. So it's got some pepper in it, which, you know, we can argue pepper back and forth, but it comes with real butter on it. And so you get real butter. I'll double that up. Bring me a double, double order of that butter. I'll have that sirloin steak. I'll order a baked potato without a, without the potato. So I get the sour cream, the bacon and the cheese. And that is a meal. That's a great way, you know, to, to have, if you, if you, and it brings me to this guy's comment here because I absolutely agree with him. You know, preparing food, you know, is critical to this way of eating. I'd much rather come home and eat. Mm. You know, yep. I, I don't know how many times I've sat there and go, you know, I could stop here at this Mexican restaurant on the way home, but I can cook me a much better steak at house and it's sitting yeah. there waiting for me. And so I just get zoom on by. Um, but there's sometimes that you, uh, you that you're out and about and you just can't do it. I mean, you, 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 know, you need to do something. You're getting off late from work. Or you 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 didn't pack a lunch, so McDonald's is a go-to. You can go to McDonald's. I order four quarter pounder patties a la carte. Cost me like six dollars and fifty six cents to go in there and do that. They cook them fresh, and you know you'll normally end up getting parked at the window because they won't be ready by the time you get to the window. So you end up having to wait a couple minutes for it. But they come out screaming hot. You add some salt to it. It's a really good way to get some meat. McDonald's meat is a hundred percent. You know. Um, Beef. Yeah. There's nothing added into it. It's just beef. There's no other added ingredients. But my favorite, and because it's fresher, is Wendy's. Yep. Wendy's, you, you can drive in there and you can order four large patties. And then I normally order one or two sides of three-piece bacon to go on it. That'll cost me right around the you know 8 $9 range. Um, and their meat's never frozen. So it's super fresh and they cook it fresh for you. Uh, so that's always a great option for a, for a you know a place to stop if you need to get some protein and some fat. Um, with that, I much rather come home and eat. But you know, if you yeah. got to do it, if you're on the road, if your lifestyle just doesn't allow for it, sometimes those are great options, and and you can learn to use those pretty much in any restaurant. You know, you know, ask them to avoid the seed oils. Ask them to provide this. Uh, Laura Spat, who's in the you know, yeah, this, uh, what she ordered. Order. She yeah. has some great videos where she goes in and she's like, can I have this and then add some shrimp and this? And yeah, you're going to pay more for it. But uh, ultimately, your health's more important than, you know, how much you're paying for it. I think uh, Charger Mopar, Rick, he, he said that uh, a lot of people don't know what seed oils are. And he's right. So uh, I, I stand corrected. When I go in, I don't say no seed. I don't say I have a seed oil allergy. I say I have a vegetable oil allergy, which I do. Yes, My body yeah, that's a good point. So make sure you tell them it's vegetable. They won't know what seed oil is. Like, well, we don't. We use this this uh, spray. We don't use seed oil, right? But if it's right. vegetable based, right. that's the problem. So, yeah. So old carnivores. Now that's a fine looking yeah. bunch of carnivores. I think he needs to get his glasses adjusted. But but we'll yeah. go with that. <laughs> yeah. Old guy's a good dude, man. He's a he's yeah. A I like guy him. Too. I need to talk to him. <clears throat> All right. Question: Anyone have GI issues? Like. Uh, I experiment with the amount of fat without any difference. Go three to seven days without a poop, then stomach upset, and I go four times in a few hour period. Who wants to start with that question? I go three to five days without poop every week, and I've been that way for months. Uh, some people do that. Some people have poops every morning. Some don't, and that that I'm not constipated. Um, now, I mean, if you if you're having uh, 
four in an, a few hour period, maybe you're just not sitting long enough to get it done. And you got an upset stomach. I don't get an upset stomach. So that's all I can say on that. I'm going about twice a week. Yeah. And um, I don't, I don't get an upset stomach, but I, I do have to make sure I maintain my, my, uh, my fat level so that it, you know, it comes out <laughs> without problems. Um, you know, I normally, like I said, I went today, you know, I, it'll, pro it'll probably be Wednesday before I before I need to use the restroom again because <laughs> that's, your body's going to consume all that. There's not going to be a lot of waste product. Right. Right. Um, so, but if you're still new to the uh, to the diet, you may be still adjusting to it, and so your body hasn't quite got there yet. So in the beginning, I had a lot of times where I thought maybe I was constipated, but it's just your body's just not ready to to do it. Um, yep. So you have to figure that out. You know, some people get really excited and they start, oh my goodness, I got to take magnesium. I got to take, start taking some type of stool softener. I'm, you know, you know, locked up. Well, no, you probably just don't have anything in the tank to get rid of. Um, so you're just going to have to, you know, find your way through that. But if it continues on for any long period of time, I would definitely be looking at uh, what you're doing, you know, to uh, adjust maybe your fat level or uh, make sure that you don't have any other, you know, GI issues that uh, there were underlying that you didn't know about. Yeah, I would agree with all that. Um, you know, the one thing is when you first start carnivore, even coming from keto, um, you may have a, not indigestion because I've never had, and this is my own experience, but I've never had the indigestion part. But, you know, it will be um, a little liquidy uh, for a while, um, maybe a few days up to a week, something like that. And then things will settle out. And then, of course, the fat discussion we had earlier. Um, I go every day. Uh, Dr. Chaffee says, um, based on what he says, I'm assuming it's because I have one cup of coffee every morning and that acts as a, as a laxative in a way, or at least helps you, helps your body to, to go. Um, but how convenient is it, uh, to take small poops once yeah. a day or poop twice a week? <laughs> I mean, you know, and, awesome. and if you're on OMAD, you're eating once a day. I mean, yeah, uh, just it's this is so convenient besides everything else that's going on. It simplifies your life completely in a lot of areas, not just eating, but prepping food, shopping for food, planning. I used to plan like food for like a week. I would plan my son's coming. I'm going to plan every day of the weekend. I don't plan anything anymore. I just have what I got in the freezer. Let's throw let's throw a frozen ribeye in the, in the air fryer and get, be eating in 20 minutes. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, the max I might schedule out is two or three days. I might be thinking about something, but I I'm never thinking past that point. You know, I, I got a yeah. freezer full of food. I'm sure I'll eat something in there. Right. And you don't even have to thaw it out. You know, if right. you have an air fryer, you know, like you said, you know, just it's magic. I cooked a steak yesterday from frozen. That's what I do. It's, it's magic for a single person. Yeah. Let me tell you what, if you're single, this is a hundred percent. The only way you need to live right here. Uh, overcoming car says, I know you need to eat fat, but I, I lost a big amount of weight during my 72 hour fast. Why did I lose more weight during a fast than if I eat uh, fat with protein? Uh, who wants to start with that one? Well, a calorie restriction, you're going to lose more weight, not eating anything than you will with, <laughs> than you will with eating anything. So yeah, that's, that's going to happen. So you can't compare a fast eating fat with protein. You you could compare eating protein with fat with protein, and that would be a more fair comparison. But if you're just going to restrict your calories and not eat anything, well, then you can't really compare that. And and also, right. weight is absolutely the worst indicator of success in this way of eating because you can lose muscle. There's a lot of things that weigh. There's bone density, there's muscle, there's water, there's fat, and all these things can change. So as you continue to eat a real proper human diet and eat the proper amount of fat, you're going to get more bone density, which weighs more. You're going to get more muscle. All my muscles are are firming up and my fat is burning off and I eat a ton of fat. So I, I and all I can tell you is what's happened with me and what's happened with a lot of people I know. I can't tell you, you know, beyond, it's anecdotal. But when like Jordan Peterson says, when you hear tens of yeah. thousands of anecdotal stories and they're all the same, that becomes a hypothesis. And that's what our hypothesis is. This is a continuation of the question. I didn't see it. If you want to read that, too, there eating straight protein do the same thing it actually doesn't you can look that up i think you can look up uh, dr dr barry 
uh, has something about that. And so does uh, Dr. Chafee about eating the appropriate amount of fat. Uh, your body actually, if you don't eat enough fat, your body can basically sense or perceive that it's in a low quality food environment or a, a low food amount environment. And it can actually hold on to fat longer and put you into kind of like a starvation emergency mode where it doesn't want to get in a bad situation. So I'll say, well, we, we're not getting enough food here. Let's hold on to these fat stores. So uh, yeah, eating fat does not cause fat. Dietary fat does not become fat in your system. That's the, you're fighting against that right now. That's a food myth that you're fighting against and uh, it's in your head. That's not the way the body works. So. Right. Brian, you got anything to add to that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Brian. <clears throat> yeah. So, so I would say that, you know, the first thing is we often say we we're, we're losing weight or we want to lose weight, but the real thing is that we want to lose the body fat that's, yeah. you know, the fat that's in our body, right? <laughs> the excess fat that we have. And you, typically when you're overweight, when you lose that fat, you actually lose weight. So that's where we get the whole idea of losing weight. Um, weight could be so many different things. You know, it, it could be water loss, it could be muscle loss and so forth. But when you're, when you're doing a fast and you have extra body fat, all of your energy is going to come from that body fat, right? You're not bringing any fat. You're not bringing any carbs and your body needs either energy or carbs, or I'm sorry, your body needs either fat or carbs for energy source, right? Last thing is fat. Don't do the carbs, but either way, if you're not bringing them in, what it's going to do is it's going to use, it's going to convert that stored fat in your body to energy. So you're going to lose more fat that way, right? So that's why fasting is good. That's why you hear people talk about doing OMAD or TUMAD, and that's an intermittent fast that is really good for your body because you are losing some of that stored um, fat in in your body, right? So so that's a key thing to it right there. Um, and like I already said, you know, fat does not cause you to get fat. If, if you're just eating protein, you're going to go into a starvation mode because your body uses fat or carbs for energy and you're not taking anything else in other than the protein. So your body's saying, wait a minute, I need to kind of hold on to this. So that's where the difference is between like a fasting and eating just basically protein. When I was in army survival school in the Arctic school, I, we had to eat rabbits and they had something called rabbit starvation. And it's not just rabbits, but, and we talked about this earlier. You, you talked about it, Brian, that our brains need more fat. Then uh, other animals like dogs don't eat nearly as much as fat as we do. My dog, dog food, which I make is made out of chicken, has way less fat because that's all they need. But we, if we were eating just rabbits and lean meats like that, we would die from what's called a protein poisoning or rabbit starvation. So yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely factual. You, you don't want a, a lean meat diet. That's one of the worst things you can do. Uh, and they, they go, they cover it in a in that movie. I did a documentary uh, called fat, a documentary where uh, they did a study called the Bellevue study. And they put these guys on an all meat diet for a whole year in a hospital controlled environment and did their labs every month. And the only time they got sick was when they put them on a high protein, low fat diet and they actually got sick and they gave fat back to them. They got all better. So, yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Because uh, uh, those guys were coming from uh, spending time with the Inuits, Arctic. right? Yeah. Arctic Circle. And and right. no one believed them for, uh, that right. they could survive on that. So they said, all right, we'll lock us in a hospital for a year and. Yep. and test this out. And of course, you know, when you're, when you're hanging out with the Eskimos, you're eating a lot of, eating a lot of blubber off of whales and seals, you know, so caribou too. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Right. So, I mean, the protein is the building blocks, right? That's what builds your muscles. But the fuel is like Brian <laughs> said, your fuel is either fat or it's carbs. And, you know, we believe in the fat because your insulin's not going to spike it's a great source of fuel. Your body's going to create ketones, which your brain prefers, which I found out last night during the stream that your heart prefers ketones. I didn't know that. Um, so that was pretty brilliant. So you want to fuel with either fat or carbs. And as carnivores, we fuel with fat. So you want to make sure you're getting enough. And then the protein is the building blocks of your body. So they work hand in hand. And then, you know, to channel my inner Jason Fung just from watching his videos, uh, you know, if you do have an extended fast, um, you know, like the 48, I, I do alternate day fasting sometimes, not yet, but I did four years ago. 
Um, I use that just if I hit a plateau to help kickstart, you know, loss again, that's one way to do it. But uh, at least what doctors are saying, cause I'm not one of those, but um, it helps with autophagy, right? So right. your, it, you, your body can eat up its bad cells, replace it with new ones. It's just a good way to, to kick in the garbage disposal. Also um, the longer fast and in, increase human growth hormone, which is, does a lot of amazing things. Um, you know, some people that I've seen on in the community, you know, they're like Chad, right? A minimalist carnivore. He talks about how his, his gray is going away, <laughs> you know, at 60, yeah. 60 years, 61 years old, yeah, mine too. Uh, things like that. So, yeah. I mean, it's, I, you know, my joke is, you know, the carnivore diet is like playing a country song backwards. Yeah. You know, your dog, your dog runs back home. You get your girlfriend back. You get your metabolic health, health back, you lose yeah. weight and your mama gets out of prison. <laughs> That's good. That's funny. Um, all of that I would add to that. And, and you basically covered it, Mike is fasting um, is about a lot of different benefits. You know, you know, it will spur your weight loss and it will, it will uh, drive down some, you know, utilizing your fat load for energy, but it, you know, autophagy has a big play in it too. Your organs, you know, some of your organs, like your fatty liver is going to start shrinking, which is good. You know, your liver is going to get healthier. Your organs are going to get healthier. Your body's going to use autophagy and start repairing things. And some of the stuff you had on you, like excess skin, if you were morbidly obese, right. like myself, and you got that, you got that 50 year old dad bod going on, you know, the fasting will help tighten things back up. So you don't have this you know, drooping man boobs and stuff. So there's a lot to it and, and all that stuff adds up to weight. So there's a, there's a lots of reasons why your weight's going to drop under fasting. Um, but overall, you know, fat, you can't fast forever. You can only fast for, you know, so many days and you're going to have to, I mean, you, right. you can push it out as long as you want, but at some point you're going to end up needing to eat protein and you're going to need end up eating a high fat diet again. Otherwise you'll die. Yeah. And that's so, what the carnivore diet is, is a high, high fat, and, uh, you know, high fat protocol. So that's what we're doing here. And, you know, it, 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 it your body responds to that. All, all of our bodies here have responded to that. And that it, so I think yeah. before you get into advanced fasting, you probably get the basics of a carnivore diet under your belt and then start introducing when you start tuning things like I did, I am now, you know, six months in now I'm tuning things. I'm reintroducing things. I'm trying fast. I'm doing different things. But uh, when you first start day one, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend just like jumping in and going 100 percent carnivore and fasting all at the same time. I mean, that's a lot going on. And you, you probably need to even Brian said like you can do a keto to carnivore. You can do a transition and maybe that way fasting because then you're not doing it all at once. Right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Guys, have I missed any questions? You see any questions out there that I, that I skipped over? Uh, there's another question at 153. From overcoming carbs, and kind of on the one same. Yeah, Not eating fast and excluding fat and carbs. What is your body using for energy? Wouldn't your body respond the same way? I think we basically answered that. That's yeah. We talked about that. This, this is yeah. that was given before we answered. So okay. Yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so you one, can do that. You you can eat high high protein zero fat food like rabbits. And then you will die of rabbit starvation after a time. I mean, you can't survive long term on it. It will keep you from dying immediately. But once you run out of your stores, you're not going to, you're going to get protein poisoning. Yeah. And then uh, I assume this is for you, Larry he says, I'm not military, but saw you on Dante's channel. New subscriber. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. All right. Jazz. Cool. Yeah. I was on Dante's channel Saturday. So. I was... Oh, that's very cool. That's cool. Appreciate you. Right, 143, yeah. I think, is a joke question, but I, I like joke questions. So. 143. I don't know if it's a joke or not. I think so. Uh, yeah, that's 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 Charger Mopar <laughs> there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know what? Um, oh yeah. If you if you've Why ever not? been out camping, this actually works. You you can take food, wrap it up in some tin foil. Stick it in there on the engine somewhere, drive for 30 minutes, and, and you know, it will heat it up. And so, you know, would I do it every day? No. 
<laughs> but you know, would I show it to my kids as a great Not learning a you know, experience? Absolutely. Right. Uh, you know, and quartzite carnivores in here. Uh, so you can relate to this. If you live in Arizona in the summertime, you know, maybe put something up in the dashboard. Yeah. <laughs> <Turns out laughs> in Arizona, you Arizona could cook a brisket in your car. <laughs> What's that? I said in Arizona, I thought you had to cool your food before you could eat it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you could probably cook a brisket yeah. in your car. You probably could. We got a Facebook user here that says fat makes everything better. I agree. Yep. All right. Guys, got any more questions? Please throw them in the comments. Hey, uh, you know, go on, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You know, everybody is out here, you know, trying to, to get the word out about carnivore. You're hitting the button helps us get the word out because YouTube's algorithm will, will lock on to that and it'll help put this message out to, to more people. Another thing that you guys can find is I'm taking all these lives from every Sunday and I'm uploading them to as a podcast. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to, nice. to listen to the audio. If you miss something, you can come back and pull one of those up and listen to it on your way to work. Um, and you won't have to look at our ugly faces that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we benefit. we appreciate you guys. Uh, I got yeah. another question. Well, thank you. Do I need to take supplements? Um, I've heard some people say yes, and I've heard a lot of people say no. I don't take any supplements, um, and I don't feel like I need it. If you're getting a good, nutritious meat diet of of fatty red meat, ribeyes. Um, and you're going outside and exposing your skin to the sun and getting vitamin D, and then I would say probably not. Um, but like we said many, many times here is everybody's a little different and it depends on your personal situation. But, you know, um, on the, as a whole, I would say no, but there might be situations where it may be a yes. Um, Larry, what's your thoughts? So when I started, um, I was peeing every two hours pretty much because I was just, uh, shedding water weight and as the cells break down and as your inflammation goes away, you're going to shed a ton of water weight. And because of that, uh, I needed self, I needed supplements during that period of probably a month. And I took salt. I didn't buy LMNT or anything. I just used salt and then also magnesium because I get cramps in my legs every now and then. And that's all I took. Now I just salt my food. I don't take any supplements. I do take magnesium occasionally and I have added iodine to my uh, diet because I just don't know if I'm getting enough and you can't overdo iodine. I was watching Dr. Barry. He talked about, it. he recommended putting two drops in some water and drinking it. It tastes like garbage, but if you actually get uh, bubbly water, if you get like Topo Chico or 1877 bubbly water, and you put two drops in there, you don't taste it at all. So that's what I do. Or you can put it in coffee and you won't taste it at all either. And the thing is you can't overdo iodine. And a lack of iodine, you don't know if you have it in your diet because it depends on what your animals that you're eating are eating. So if they're eating from a soil that has iodine, then you're getting enough. But where's your beef come from? You have no idea. I have no idea where that Wagyu burger came from that I got. So I don't know what they were eating or where it was. So it's not going to hurt to add iodine in. And not having enough iodine can mimic uh, thyroid issues. Um, and also there's some kind of female breast deal. Uh, doc, watch the Dr. Barry video where he talks about it. There's like some uh, painful breast issue for females. And they said the iodine almost always fixes that like hundred percent of the time. So look up Dr. Barry's iodine video, and then you can consider if you need that. It's really cheap and you only need two drops a day and it's super easy. So that's the only thing I take. That's it. Brian. So if you've been doing the carnivore diet for a while, I don't believe you need to take any supplements, um, dietary supplements or anything like that. But if you're new, like, you know, like was just mentioned by carnivore soldier, you may need to take some, something with at least electrolyte type of things. Right. So, you know, you're talking about your salt, your potassium, magnesium, um, and, and like you mentioned vitamin D for instance, um, a lot of people that are moving over to carnivore diet are doing it because of health issues or weight issues. The more you weigh, uh, the more vitamin D you need because your body just doesn't absorb it very well. Right. So if you've been doing carnivore for a couple of years, let's say, and you're pretty much at maintenance weight, um, you don't need as much vitamin D, but 
if you're more overweight, you probably need more. And it depends on how much you're getting outside in the sunlight. That's, that's the best kind because that your body slowly absorbs that over time. You could get, you know, a good 20 to 30 minutes of sunlight and that, that would be enough vitamin D probably for a couple of days. If you're taking a supplement because you're not getting enough sunlight, you need to do it like every day because a supplement just doesn't last in your body and you don't absorb it as well. Um, so there's different things like that, that I think it depends where you're at, if you're early on, or if you've been doing it for a while, um, definitely for people that are first moving over that have done standard American diet, uh, they can have issues with leg cramps and, and not having enough salt and stuff like that. So when you're first transitioning, you, you have to really look at those things after you've been doing it for a while, you probably do not need it. Um, it's always a good idea to have blood work done every once in a while, though, and make sure that all your levels do look good. You know, that um, your iodine's good, your sodium's good, um, and magnesium, potassium. Your body kind of regulates those, but you could be on a little bit of the lower end of the, the good spectrum, and that might mean that you need a little bit of that. Typically, though, you know, beef is going to have all that you need in, in that, but... Again, it, it depends on where you're at. If, if you're early on, you probably do need to look a little closer at things and you might need certain electrolytes. All right, Mike? Yeah, I, I, I would agree with all that. Um, I do put a little bit of iodine in my coffee every morning, you know, sort of the just in case. Um, my understanding, though, is if you're eating sardines pretty regularly and or shrimp, pretty regularly yeah. or crab legs, which is my favorite, but they cost a million dollars right now. But, um, you know, so if you're doing that, you may not need the iodine, but because we're getting, going to the better salts, you know, the Redmond salts, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the other salts that come from the, the ground and, and they're not processed, uh, iodine's not added there. So it probably in, it doesn't hurt to add in a few drops of iodine, uh, you know, in a, in a coffee or a drink throughout the day. When you're first starting, uh, even keto or carnivore, um, when you're dropping all that water weight because carbohydrate, yeah. <laughs> uh, you lose the carbohydrates and your hydrate is going to leave you and it's going to take uh, all that salt and electrolytes with it. So I found that out uh, the hard way when I first started. I had some massive cramps. Oh, they hurt. Um, and so what I've learned... Um, cause I've yo-yoed. So I've gotten back on the diet a few times, you know, to, I don't get the keto flu anymore the last couple of times. Cause I just learned, you know, if, if I start getting a little slight headache or something, I'll just eat some salt. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's been really good. Now I have discovered elements. I, a uh, wonderful friend at church, <laughs> uh, had some extras and gave them to me. And so I tried some and, and then I've actually ordered some now here's the danger in that. Uh, depending on who you are, but, um, I love the chocolate and I put it in my coffee and it makes it taste amazing, but it does have stevia. Yeah. And I don't know if stevia is the best thing for me. I was worried it was going to make me crave, you know, my Reese's peanut butter cup blizzards again. That has <laughs> not happened. Uh, so I just love the taste. Um, is, would stevia slow down my weight loss or other issues. I don't know, uh, but I'm not willing to give it up just yet, <laughs> but yeah, that's where I'm coming from on that stuff. Red Redmond has, uh, uh, without Stevia, have relight. I believe it has no Stevia and it's uh, cheaper too. So uh, if you're interested in okay. doing a product, you can check out Redmond's relight on uh, Amazon. Okay. And the other thing I was going to have say a link about... on your, I don't, but I can put it on there. It's R E L Y T. I don't put links to stuff. I don't use. I've tried it, but oh, I don't, okay. I don't use it. So I'm not going to put a link there. Right. Go ahead, Brian. The other thing I was going to say about element is, and I'm not, I don't use element, so I'm not a hundred percent on this, but I thought that I heard that they also have an on flavored one and that one might yeah. not have stevia. I'm not sure. It might not it taste might. good though. I don't know. It, it, it tastes salty. Have, I've had yeah, the raw, I've had the raw element. Yeah. I have unflavored. I like it actually. Um, I put that in my coffee too, if I don't have the chocolate or I just want to skip it. Um, I've actually put it in just plain water. Some people don't like it, um, but yeah. to me, it's fine. Yeah. What I, what I did when I was, I didn't 
know about Relight or I didn't know about them when I first started. I was just doing the carnivore thing and I got um, dill pickle juice. And I know it's not technically yeah. carnivore, but it works because it's full of salt and electrolytes. Yeah. So you can buy little shots of dill pickle juice in the grocery store at HEB or even online. And I just do keep them in the fridge and shoot one of those whenever I was feeling it coming. Yeah, the the first time I heard about dill pickle juice, I was watching a Philadelphia Eagles game at the Dallas Cowboys. And it was, I don't know, it was a feels like temperature of 112 or something at, at the old Cowboys stadium. And the Eagles were drinking pickle juice and they were yeah. beating the tar out of the Cowboys. Um, and they were making a, you know, they've kind of became a running thing during the game. And it's like, well, that's interesting. Um, I've done that before too. And it tastes good. Well, a lot of athletes actually do drink pickle juice. That's that's a it's yeah. superior to like Gatorade, where you're full of sugar, right? So right. it's just really just the electrolytes. So if you want to beat the Cowboys, drink pickle drink your juice. Pickle juice. <laughs> that's right. It works, but I only use that as a bridge to get to where I'm at now because I don't do anything like that now. I just put. Must salt be a lot of teams out there drinking that. pickle juice because the Cowboys are getting beat on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they looked so good last week. Oh my goodness! I'm a. a we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> UT's looking pretty good. I don't like. I'm not a Cowboy fan. Ow. Don't get me wrong. But they just uh, they they looked really good last week, so I don't want to turn this into a football discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That may not like <laughs> yeah. not everyone. Will no, we won't be great to that. It says yeah, uh, I right. take a supplement because I'm not eating a lot of beef, so I didn't sure I have what I like. Levels are good. I'm uh, great on pork. Love it. Always juicy and fatty. You know, you got to do what you got to do. I was listening to the 24 hour live yesterday with some conversations going on. And I don't remember exactly who was talking, but if you got an aversion to, to red meat and you got to eat pork or chicken to get on it, you just got to make sure you're maintaining your fat levels. Um, one of the things that they recommended was to make sure you're adding a little bit of red meat. And over time, your body will start craving it more and you'll be able to get a better nutrient because the nutrient load in pork or chicken um, isn't anywhere near red meat. And, you know, you'll, you'll find that over time. So you just add a little bit here or there. And then as time goes on and your body heals, it will start craving that more. The other thing is uh, pork and chicken more explicitly have uh, much more linoleic acid, omega-6 in them yep. to omega-3 ratios. So you are getting an inferior type of food. Uh, it's not the optimum, but it's still carnivore. So, I mean, you're still doing yep. the right thing. You're still going to lose weight. You're, you're just not optimizing your body. So. That's just something you steer towards right. over time. I don't know. Did you guys tune in yesterday when uh, Kelly Hogan was on? And someone asked her about um, meat aversion. They were yeah. having some sort of meat aversion. And she talked about how she went through that. And her encouragement was great. She goes, you know, um, if if you're not, whatever you're aversion to, usually like steak or ground beef, um, eat something else that's carnivore. Eat the pork until it passes eat mm -hmm. you know the chicken until it passes you know you're still eating carnivore um i agree it's probably not the best and i don't prefer it anymore but um you know if you end up in a situation where ground beef just isn't doing it for you you know switch over to some chicken thighs and with the skin on and until you get that hunger for a ground beef again it'll come back which will happen yeah it'll come back yeah yeah it'll come back from experience it'll come back like a storm yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. That part of that segment, she was talking about her meat aversions that she's had personally were all due during her pregnancies. Mm. And she would oh, she'd right. be pregnant yeah. and she gets a meat aversion. So, you know, she ended up eating some other protein sources until those, you know, versions passed. And then she was back to her, <laughs> you know, uh, red meat. So, yeah, that was right. that was that 24 hour live. I didn't catch all 24 hours of it, but I watched yeah. quite a bit of it. And, and that was a lot of yeah. good information in it. And, uh, you know, you can go back and rewatch those and play through them. All right. Um, uh, oh, uh, Elemental. One thing I was going to add is I was using Elemental daily when I first started the diet. But now I find that I only, only want it two, maybe three times a week where I'll drink a bottle of, of uh, you know, of uh, Elemental. Um, and it does have stevia in it, which will uh, uh, spike your glucose level. You know, I've, t I've 
had it and within a half an hour checked my blood level and, and had that spike so i know it will do that um and of course if your glucose level is spiking then it's gonna you know it's you're not going to be in ketosis you're not going to be getting the fat burn that you want so th there is a trade-off there and i've had the raw flavor but it just tastes really really salty water um so I, I have an aversion to salty water, you know, so it's not something I want to drink. I have had the chocolate in my coffee. I find that, you know, reasonable, um, but like I, said, I don't have the cravings for it, but I do salt everything to taste. And you'll find on this diet that you're going to salt your, your food a lot heavier than you used to because your body wants it and it's not going to taste salty to add extra salt to things. And that's, you know, what you end up needing. And, and I use nothing but Redmond salt personally. Yeah, me too. One thing I'd say about the carnivore diet, there's so much dogma going around where people are judging you. Like if someone says they drink pickle juice, I've, I've had people like come at me like that's not that's not carnivore. Meanwhile, they're drinking LMNT with sweetener. So, I mean, right. it's, it's right. you got to find what works for you and everyone's going to have a different path. But there are some yep. basic generalizations that are true. Like you don't want sweeteners. That's a true statement. And, you know, you want to minimize or remove them completely. Uh, or and, and you get to watch pickle juice because some pickle juice has a lot of sugar in it, <clears throat> right? Uh, and plant products yeah. too. So now the stuff I use didn't, but I mean, yeah, you have to watch out. Make sure it's dill pickle juice with no sugars in it, but it's still a plant product, right? So coffee, same thing. A lot of people will come after you because their their religion says you can't have coffee if you're carnivore. So yeah. whatever <laughs> you, you do, you but I'm gonna do me, right? <laughs> yep. I. I drink I drink a couple of cups of coffee every day. I put nothing in it but heavy whipping cream. I take a little stick blender. I, I blend it up to the where part, but it's almost it's basically whipped cream, and then pour my coffee over it, and that is absolutely amazing. Um, some people like butter in their coffee, but if you know anything about how butter's made, it's just the next step after whipped cream. So I'm basically almost to butter. Yeah, I'm just you know stopping at the whipped <laughs> yep. cream. All right, guys, yeah, we've, been going for, we've been going for an hour 16. I think we wore this topic down. Yeah. Um, you know, we still got 32 people in here. If anybody's got any questions, Sweet. you know, now's the time to throw them in there. Um, please hit the like button, the thumbs up button, you know, and uh, share this on your social media. Uh, be checking for it out on, on a podcast. If you, you know, if you missed it and you want to listen to it on the road, um, so what I like to do at this stage is I'm just going to go through each person and, you know, if you got something that you want to say or add, um, you know, you can, we'll, we'll give each person the stage and then we'll, if there's any more questions, we'll answer them. And then, uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day and we'll see you on the next one. Now, next Sunday, I'm celebrating my 24th anniversary with my wife. We're going to a, a carnivore meetup on Friday in South Carolina with, uh, uh, intentional carnivore. I think uh, uh, Kip's going to be there, and uh, uh, Carnivore Quest is going to be there. It's, it's going to be a great meetup. And then after that, I'm headed. To, you know, and I'm the guy that lives in the woods. So you'll find this funny. I got an Airbnb cabin in the woods in Carolinas <laughs> that we're going to spend the weekend nice. in. You know, and we're going to shut down the the electronics and just enjoy our 24th anniversary. So there will be no live next Sunday. But the Sunday after that, which I believe is the 1st of October, we'll be back strong. I've already got a few people signed up for it. I'm reaching out to some some names, some doctors and stuff that we'll be adding to our to our uh, lineup. Uh, so good stuff coming in as we move into into the next month. Um, we got a quick look. We got a question here real quick. Oh. What things oh, this is going to be a hard question. I don't know this. One. What things are known to increase arthritis? Standard American diet, <laughs> Seed oil sugar, and carbohydrate, Car yeah. carbohydrates for sure. Yeah, uh, sugar, sugar, yeah. seed oils. The, the, I mean, for me at least, any type of sugar and seed oils definitely will oils. cause arthritis yeah. issues. Yeah, anything I mean, that causes inflammation or, or is, yeah, going to, is going to lead to arthritis. Yep. So of course, yeah. carb, you know, uh, carbohydrates, uh, seed oils. Those are definitely going to be your big ones. Now, all I don't, and we can all talk about this. I had all kinds of pains. Me too. On the sad diet, I had a knee pain that that hurt me for for years. I've had you know uh, leg pains. I've had joint pains. I've had you know soreness in, mm. in, in the back. After starting carnivore, all of that went away. Um, yep. You know, getting off the, the carbohydrates, getting off the seed oils. I don't have any pains. I, I, I mean, I can work all day and, and my joints don't even hurt. 
Um, so there's a lot to it, but I, I don't have a good answer for anything else that causes arthritis. Larry, what do you think? I mean, uh, same thing. I, I can't say I have no pain because I've got physical injuries from the military that are not going to heal because they're ligaments and torn tissues and stuff. that's not going to come back. So I still have some pain, but I can say it's 99% better uh, when you remove inflammation because that's what the driver is. I used to snap, crackle, and pop when I got up any time, and now I don't. So it's it makes a huge difference. So I would say, yeah, uh, definitely arthritis is increased by anything you eat that's processed foods or the four horsemen of what I call the carnivore apocalypse, which is your, your seed oils, your milled wheat, your sugar, and your trans fats. Uh, your hydrogenated oils. So get those out of your diet. You're probably going to be pretty good. I think he says in here, he thinks coffee is kicking <laughs> kicking his arthritis up. That um, can happen and, too. Dr. And, and that's a possibility. That. Yeah, know, it could be a reaction. You, you might, you need to stop coffee altogether or maybe go to a, to a, to a less of a roast. You know, I, I do a medium roast. I know some people like a dark roast. Some people like death roast or something. I don't, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of coffee. I like it to taste good. Um, Mike, what's your thoughts? Yeah. Um, well, interesting about the coffee comment because, you know, we, we're all N equals one, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's a little bit different. Uh, we have different genes, we have different lives, all that stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, if coffee is causing or you suspect coffee might be causing an issue, it's really easy to, well, I'm not saying it's going to be <clears throat> easy, but, uh, it's really, real easy to test it in the sense of it's a pretty linear equation you know just eliminate it for a month and see if you feel better and if you don't that wasn't it and if you do that was it and you know um that's kind of how we all figure out what what works best for us you know uh and then everything else that you said about just the sad you know the my whole joke about you know carnivores like playing a country song backwards i mean it's in a way it's true and so why all these things clear up for people is because of that the four horsemen of the apocalypse you know especially the seed oils and the, and the carbs that are just poisoning your body and you get rid of that and your body has an amazing ability to to heal itself and and that's why people feel a lot better in all kinds of ways um and for me um i don't have aches and pains even at 60 years old um you know no old football injuries or anything like that but uh you know, I do feel a lot better, um, even just without exercising yet. And I do plan on adding that in, but just living my life, you can feel your muscles tighten up a little bit and you've got the protein in there that, that helps, you know, with the building blocks of that and fat to fuel your body. So even though I'm, I'm not getting over any pain, I feel better. Cool. Brian. Um, so I think, it's important to understand that everybody is different and they're going to come at things differently. And I think that one thing that we don't talk about a lot is um, easing into going carnivore and so forth, right? Like if you're doing a very high carb uh, standard American diet, um, yeah, you can jump in. And a lot of people do jump in, but they run into issues usually, right? Um, you know, th those first few weeks might not be the most pleasant weeks. Let's put it that way. Right. Right. And most people that quit the carnivore diet quit in that first 30, 60 days just because of issues that they've had and so forth. So it, you really should consider easing into it. Right. Um, the, the key is you need to get rid of the sugar, the added sugars, the seed oils right away. You just need to get rid of those things mm -hmm. right away. Um, processed foods, cut out the processed foods. And, you know, if you're going to have some vegetables and fruits or whatever, that's fine. Um, and if you want to go full carnivore, which I think you should, then over time you slowly get rid of those vegetables and fruits so that you're full carnivore. Um, and that's going to be better for you than just jumping straight in. And, and I know we... As a species, we think, okay, we're going to do something. I'm going to go straight to it. But it's better to have a plan and to ease into it. And I just think that that is important to keep talking about uh, because I think less people are going to say, oh, I had this problem, whatever, so I didn't do it any longer. Because if you ease into it, you're not going to see most of those problems that people see when they jump into it right away. Outstanding. 
All right. So, um, any more questions? Make sure you throw them in there. I have a question for the for the for the chat audience, and you guys can just throw a number at me. I'm just curious what you, what your answer is. Um, I looked up sugar on labels. How many different variations of sugar do you think is on labels that's in the food that we eat? Do you think there's 20? Do you think there's 40? Do you think there's more than that? Um, you know, I'm not going to list them all out, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. give me a number for the number of, of words used to indicate sugar that are not sugar itself. There, there are other words that are used on labels to hide sugar. You know, throw it in the comments. Give me a number. I just want to see who, 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 what you guys think. And then I want to, we come back around to me. I'll, uh, I'll answer to what I found so far. All right. We see, I already see a 35 in there. So, you know, uh, throw some numbers out there. I just want to see what you think where we're at. Um, at this point, uh, Larry, what do you got going on? Tell us about what your plans are for the week with your channel. You know, where you're thinking, what things that you're researching, and just kind of bring us to, to an end. Let me see if I can do something here. I was trying to do this earlier, and it wouldn't let me do it. Uh, One person talking goes big. Oh, yeah, do it this way. Yeah, there, there you go. we go. There you go. So uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. CST, or in a half hour, uh, video. my first video is releasing for Mission Carnivore. So check out my YouTube channel. Check that video out. Like and subscribe it. It's an interview with a British infantry, light infantry soldier from the Desert Rats. Uh, which if you're familiar with that, they're a very famous British unit from the Gulf War in 1990s. I joined in the 80s, so he's my era of veteran. And he uh, suffered from Gulf War syndrome. Most of you probably have heard of that or may know that there was a Gulf War syndrome, which is all these mysterious diseases, and they didn't understand all these symptoms, why they're coming from. Well, he cured it with carnivore. So this is a great video, great interview. Check that out especially if you know someone who's a, a military veteran or someone who does suffer from Gulf War syndrome, point them over that direction. Um, Wednesday is my Wednesday night hump day hangout. It's a live uh, meetup. It's a live stream at 7.05 p.m. CST. So join me uh, online in Austin, Texas. And then Friday, I'm actually uh, on Dr. Anthony Chafee's uh, Plant Free MD show. I don't know when it's going to be produced or released, but we're, we're filming it Friday. So that'll be really exciting because we're going to be talking about veteran and first responder healthcare and how uh, their mental health care and how the carnivore diet can really assist them with uh, mental issues. And, you know, I know as a veteran myself, when I, uh, when I went on this uh, way of eating, my mental health increased drastically, radically. And I think this is great for veterans. So that's why I started my mission carnivore, which is the first video we're seeing here about your mental and physical health as a veteran or first responder. So that's all I got going. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, I appreciate you you know, being here to support the channel. Yeah, it's great. All right. It's uh, Brian, what's your thoughts? Yeah. So the last couple of weeks have been kind of crazy for me because I've probably done like five or six live streams each week. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually dying down a little bit here and, um, I only have a couple this week, but my next live stream actually is with Carnivore Backwoods on Wednesday. We have that live stream um, 7 p.m., I believe, right? 7 p.m. Eastern? I believe it's 7 p.m., yes. So we're going to have a live stream. We're going to be talking, I believe it's about uh, meal planning, so you're going to want to check that out. Um, I have another live stream the next night on Thursday with My Weight Loss Life. Uh, we we were doing this thing called the low carb football party. And so we watched the NFL uh, Thursday night game and we talk, you know, low carb carnivore, you know, would we'll take questions. We usually pick some sort of a topic and we talk about that topic within, um, you know, the, the carnivore space or the low carb space. So I have both of those live streams and I have a couple interviews that I'm working on. Um, I should also mention, Carnivore Soldier and I did an interview uh, a couple days ago, and <laughs> we're going to be putting those out, putting that out on our channels on Monday. So be on the lookout on both of our channels for that interview. It's going to be coming yep. out on Monday. It was a good one too. We had a lot to yeah. say. That was good. Yeah, it was a great interview. Outstanding. All right, Mike, what do you got going on yeah. this week? <clears throat> well, pretty exciting stuff. Um, and in case you don't know, my channel used to be occasional phone videos. So like I have the uh, Mac mini 
I mean, I'm sorry, the iPhone mini 13 before they disappeared. And so normally I would be doing like a video on phones, <laughs> but I've switched to the carnivore content um, for a couple of reasons uh, because I'm doing the carnivore and I want to share the story, but everyone in this community is so amazing. Yeah. Everybody helps each other. It's um, I, just all the support and the encouragement. It's just great. So now I'm back on carnivore and I'm now in the carnivore community and thanks for having me on. It's great. Nice. And so I've, I've, I've become friends with Carrie at my metamorphosis. Uh, we're going live Tuesday night. So I'm going to be on her channel Tuesday night. I ordered one of her t-shirts. So I'll wear that on the stream. Um, and you know, she likes to talk rock and roll, you know, some of the, the rock bands that she's seen over the years. And I've got kind of that history too, especially when I was younger. So so we'll talk music, I'm sure, a little bit. And then kind of like what we were talking about, all of our carnivore journey and whatnot. And then if you saw um, Zero Carb, you know, if you saw Dave's video on asking for people to, even if your story is not a big dramatic story, he wants to do all these. Well, he got dozens and dozens of emails to be on. One of them was for me. <laughs> so he's having me on on Thursday, um, 6 o'clock Central um, on Thursday, six o'clock central on Tuesday with Carrie. And, um, uh, I may come up with an idea or two for just regular old videos on my channel as well. So cool. Thanks again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, um, I'm working on a couple things. Now I asked a question here and, and I got a bunch of different answers. We got 35, 35, uh, uh, somebody said 127, I got 45, I got 20. So th this is what I've come up with. And th this might not be an all-inclusive list. Um, I've come up with 63. 63 different names of ingredients that are all just sugar that's in our food. And it's I'm going to be doing a video on this, uh, hopefully get it out you know, sometime here in the next uh, few days. But basically, it's why we have to look at the labels. And you really, if it's got more than two or three ingredients in it, you probably don't want it in the first place. But, you know, I have gone to the store and, and found these ingredients and things that I th never would have thought in the world that they would be in, but they hide them, you know. Um, so, you know, sugar and carbohydrates, and it'll say zero carbohydrates. It'll say no sugar. But then you look at the ingredients, and, well, there's dextrose or there's circo or circos, there's glucose, there's, there's a, cane sugar there's granulated sugar there's beet sugar there's there's aguavi nectar there's coconut sugar there's uh, palm sugar um <clears throat> words here that i can't even pronounce there's a whole bunch of uh, sorbitol <laughs> a bunch of all these alcohol uh, uh forms of yep. sugar fruit nectars um you know some of the more stuff that were common sorghum malt extract sorghum is a sugar um you know you, you can go on and you can Google this. I'm going to put this list on my video when I when I put it up. I'm, I'll actually I'll go ahead and I'll put this list in this video's description when we're done with this video. If you guys want to go back and look at that, but you really got to look at the labels of the foods that you're purchasing because even the ones that don't make any sense whatsoever. I was looking at salmon patties. You know, salmon patties, fish sounds good, right? They're patties. Well, there was not only was there sugar in it, there was also soybean oil. When I was like, yeah. why is that even in there? You know, I'm going to cook it on my pan. I don't need them to add oil to my food, but they put soybean oil in it. So you, you really got to watch the labels. So that's that's what I'm working on and researching this week. I have a video I got to finish editing. I did an interview with this really nice lady. She's got a great channel. Um, I'm going to try to get that done. I took a, a, a new position at work. Uh-oh. Uh oh, <laughs> he's thinking of the program. next word to say. <laughs> That's right. What? <laughs> we heard you say oh, you froze. A new position on at work. Yeah, yeah, I took a new position at work. Um, you know, so it's been keeping me kind of busy. I haven't had a lot of time to work on editing and stuff, but I'm gonna get some some videos going. I have a really good interview that I need to finish up and get edited, get posted. Um, and uh, you know. These lives are going to be every Sunday, like I said, except for this one coming up this week because it's my you know my twenty fourth anniversary. Um, but I'm looking for you know for people who want to jump in here. So if you have a YouTube channel or you just want to come on, you don't even have to have a YouTube channel. If you just want to come on here and 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 you know tell your story, 
let me know. Just shoot me an email, carnivorebackwards at gmail.com. You know, you can shoot me an email. We'll chat back and forth. I got a calendar. You can pick out a day that works for you. I'll get you locked in. And, uh, you know, we can have a great conversation. You can also find me at Facebook at Carnivore Backwoods. You can find me at, on uh, Instagram at Carnivore Backwoods. And, um, you know, just reach out to me and let me know because, you know, I'm looking for content. I've reached out to some doctors and stuff, and I've got some good responses from them. So that's stuff I'm planning for, you know, for in the future. And um, we're just going to continue on with this channel to provide good, solid information. Um, I appreciate each and one of these guys. Uh, some of these guys have already signed up for more days to, to be with us, and that's outstanding. Um, you know, whatever you got going on, we can share some information. We can talk about different topics, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, with that, I appreciate each and every one of you. I would ask that you go over to Mike Shaw's channel and hit his subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Mike, you know, all these guys, we, we preach this every week, subscribe, you know, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Mike's new at it here. He's got some channels, some followers from his, you know, from when he was doing his old videos, but they're not a lot of carnivore yep. followers. So if you could give him some love and just help, you know, drive up his, his subscription uh, level, that'd be awesome. You know, hit the rest of these guys up. And if anybody sees JT, ask him how his nap was because he was up for 24 hours. He was supposed to be here today. So I will give him, I will give him a little bit of crap, but not too much. Anyways, well, I was looking forward to meeting him too. So oh, well, yeah, yeah, time. I'm sure he'll be on the next one. I got to give. I mean, 24 hours. If you guys got on at five o'clock yeah. to four o'clock this morning, those guys look yeah. like they've been, you know, yeah. rode hard and put up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Thanks, John. All right, yeah. all right, guys. You all have a good one, and we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, catch you on the next one. Appreciate you guys. All right. All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate all it. Right. Bye. Hey, everybody, have a good day.